Now the preview is finished and as you can see something is appearing there so I'm just going to zoom into that area and as you can see it has got the waveform there so if you find that nothing's happening when the host is selected just go to internal and that should produce the waveform. Um, <clears throat> now I'm not going to show you everything that I did here because uh, it took quite a long time but basically once you've got the waveform you've got a whole bunch of tools at the top there that you can use to manip manipulate the pitch which is shown in this area here. Um, I think in order to hear the effect that you've chosen in the original settings I think what you've got to do is to remove the track pitch um, to deselect that and then you, you'll hear the effect. A study in Scarlet. Enough of that. Um, <clears throat> Now, if I move this back to the beginning, we'll see the waveform again. Uh, and what you can do is to use, um, th these are the three main tools that you'll be using to uh, correct the pitch or to create a new kind of pitch pattern, uh, as I've done here. This one is kind of produces sort of straight lines that you can move up or down. Um, there's another one, which is this one. And this one allows you to free. Let me see if I can get this working. No, for some reason it's not. Um, it's not working. But it did before. I'm not sure why it's not working now. But uh, um, I think what happened there was that when I was using this tool, I didn't double click at the end, so it didn't properly set the um, the selection, and uh, I wasn't able to continue after that. But it should be okay now. I think what you've got to do is to double click every time that you finish and then it will free up the cursor. Uh, so let me demonstrate this other tool which is the freehand tool. It's it's a good idea to use this tool uh, I think with a, a graphic pen because it's a bit easier to draw uh, the, the new pitch using a graphic pen than, than using a mouse. Um, this is the one that I used before. This is the uh, note um, tool and that sort of allows you to draw notes where the waveform is so let me just zoom out a bit and let me just zoom in a bit there so you can see the waveform is kind of being copied uh, and it's being set uh, wherever I want on the scale I can put it down there I can put it up there um, whenever you draw using one of the tools it erases everything else that you did with one of the previous tools um, now, um, with this particular tool, I mean, this is the one that I used and I found it quite useful to just make a few notes like that. And if I had the effect that I wanted, um, what I was able to do was to um, use the eye tool or the eye beam to select an area and then hit copy. Now, although I'm not using um, a kind of uh, a repeating melody or repeating rhythm, I'm using spoken word. Uh, I was still able to get a reasonably good result using the paste function, which, uh, when you paste it, allows you to paste the corrections that you've copied into a new place. So what I've got is the exact copy of, of this, and I can move it to a new location, and it will uh, correct the pitch exactly along the same pattern. And you can do that all along the, the waveform if you want, if that's what, that's what you're looking for. So basically, um, you know, this is how it works. Um, there are a few controls down here that you can use to alter the uh, number of notes that it detects, because um, it, it it can automatically de detect notes. Um, you've got the retune speed there, which can have quite a quite a dramatic effect on the on the on the, on the output that you get. Uh, and there are other settings. Uh, if you want to use these nudge buttons, what you've got to do is to um, when, you, when you're drawing the nodes, it snaps to one of the um, one of the uh, nodes uh, along the keyboard here. If you un unselect that, deselect that, then you can nudge the nodes, th the um, selected nodes. You've got to select the nodes, and then you can nudge them up or down a pixel at a time, so that you can you can have really quite precise control 
of how this thing operates. Uh, but that's basically it. I mean, the other thing I'll, I will point out again is that the um, preview button is the only way you, you have of actually finding out what's going on. A study in Scarlet by Arthur Conan Doyle. Part one. As I say, I've not been able to find uh, a way of actually uh, sampling a smaller part of the waveform than the entire preview. Uh, so if there is a way of doing that, that would be interesting to it would be interesting to find that out. But basically, that is how it works. Once you're happy with the result, you hit OK, uh, and it will change the waveform. Uh, what I'm going to do is to go back to the auto and uh, show you a couple of other features there. You've got the yeah. other controls, retune speed again. There's a slightly different retune speed function here. Uh, and you've got vibrato, which can be quite useful in certain situations. Uh, basically, I mean, you'd really need to, to read the manual to, to understand everything that's going on here. But what I'm going to do now is to load up one of the files. I'm going to load up something I did earlier. Uh, this is the original that I used. And as you can see, um, I set up the notes going up and down the scale and repeating across, uh, uh, right across the waveform. Uh, now, if I apply that, we should get a reasonably similar output to what I got first time round. So let's a study try that. in Scarlet by Arthur Conan Doyle. Part one. Being a reprint from the reminiscences of John H. Watson, M.D. Age of the Army Medical Department. Chapter 1. Mr. Sherlock Holmes. Uh, and there you are. Um, that is it. I uh, hope you had plenty of fun with that. Oh, well, I hope you have plenty of fun with that when you try it. Um, uh, if you've got any questions or anything, just leave them in the comments section below, and I'll try and get around to answering them. Uh, but thank you for watching. Bye.